What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today we're doing something really kind of silly, and what is wrong with my foot? Oh my god, look at that, look at that one foot, the one foot's fine off the side, look at that other foot though. My goodness, his leg is like broken, but anyway, we're doing something really cool today, we're gonna build a mechanical mechanism that I found on the internet, it's pretty cool. I found this gif, uh, some people will call it a gif, but it is in fact a gif. Gif. And I found this, and it's a really cool 90 degree crankshaft that uses a single rod going up and down through some ball bearing connections to actually spin one wheel at a complete 90 degree from the other wheel. So I want to try and make this and see if it's possible. I also saw one that used some weird bent rods through some holes, and I kind of duplicated that here. And look at this. Look at this. Isn't that stupid? Look at it. We're only powering this. And because of, you know, physics and science and I don't know, whatever, this would be incredibly, like, frictionful. It would have so much friction, it's not even funny. But look at this. Look at how crazy that is. Isn't that ridiculous? Just amazing. So anyway, we power this side, and that side spins just because this giant linkage is allowed to expand and contract. In real life, you could do this with, like, a rod putting through a hole... And technically speaking, the physics kind of works, I guess. But the friction would be so high, you would just lose so much mechanical power. But anyway, I don't want to build this. This is this is pretty cool. Um, I don't I don't really know what to use it for. But I want to build this other version with the ball bearing connections and see if it's even possible. Now, because of scrap mechanic, this is going to be a little bit difficult. We're going to have to build this at a perfect 90 degree spot. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the heck we're gonna do with that. You guys notice my mouse is broken? Sick, I can't actually delete stuff because my mouse just, look at that, look at that right click. That's, I need to, I need to swap my mouse out. What the heck is going, sick. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. All right, perfect. Fixed. Bought a new mouse. My old mouse is, uh, yeah, it was, it was really old, so we're, we're doing good now. Look at that. I bought an identical one, too, so now my settings are still the same, and it is wonderful. But anyway, we're gonna work on this project. Now, in order to start this, I think what we're going to do is have to basically start with the piston in, like, the top or the bottom position. We're gonna have to make this kind of, like, have lots of space around it, something like this. All right, perfect. Let's, yeah, whatever, paint that. And then let's bring this down like so, okay. And to make the ball joint happen, we need to have this be able to pivot, right? So this little bottom piece can pivot individually. And well, that'll give us the swivel motion, but then it also has to be able to rotate on the front like that, right? And then that attaches to Okay, hold on. Let's put this on a pipe piece just so there's no interference. But then this will attach to our sort of suspension mechanism that compresses while it goes up and down. So if we put this like this, now we could theoretically attach suspension to this. Now in the image I showed, you'll see the rods are going in and out. So they actually have like a hole and the rod pushes in and out. The suspension kind of duplicates that same sort of motion. Um, it'll compress and extend kind of like a telescopic rod. And it's fine in terms of duplicating the the same idea but really we'd have a hole here and we'd have that rod go completely through and come back and the rod itself would be stiff we're just compressing the rod to sort of allow for that same sort of movement um so i think that's good i'm pretty sure that's all we need for that we're basically just going to build this and then duplicate it um actually we could probably duplicate it now we've got this save yes and then we need to duplicate it over here rotate this one this way and then somehow in the middle oh shoot these have to be built up yeah see they have to be built at the top like that okay perfect and then we need those connected to a 90 degree that can also rotate and go up and down so we just need this this is actually this might be it just like that and then this needs to be allowed to rotate on that joint which it can and then we compress this with more suspension. This is either going to like explode in a massive suspension glitch or it's going to work beautifully. We're going to weld to the ground. Now all we got to do is turn off all these suspension pieces. So they're all at minimal stiffness. So they don't really provide any resistance. And then if we take our electric motor and attach it to one of these like so. 
and of course put this into a seat. This might actually be really, really quick. It's kind of a cool mechanism, to be honest. I hope it works. Um, and then we're gonna weld this whole thing down. Just like that. Perfect. Done. Let's attach this to this. And so, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is gonna rotate this, which, I don't know what this, I don't know what this is gonna do. Let's see. Okay, well, it, okay, okay, hold on, hold on a minute. Okay, it, it's, okay, we, um, we, interesting. What am I, what am I, what is not happening here that needs to be happening? Oh, the rod needs to get longer. It needs to be able to get longer. Oh, see, it, this one, if we go this way, it this rod here, it needs to be able to lengthen more than it is. It's not, it needs to go longer than this. Ah, oh, shoot. And that one needs to go shorter. And then, okay, we can actually... Oh, boy, that's that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? What if we put a piston in this as well? So we go couple suspension pieces like that sure and then we put a piston because a weak piston should just let it lengthen freely um and then we'll just you know we'll cap that off with pipes this, oh that that might be a problem we might not have enough compression we might have to build this whole thing a little bit larger but uh, let's see what this does here let's attach that attach that all right so now let's try it okay we create a suspension glitch Still not lengthening the rod any. Weirdly enough, I don't think it has enough downforce. Like, I don't think the, the rods are both pulling down. So, like, let's say if we attach this to this, just, just for curiosity's sake, if I make them both driven. See, it, it doesn't, it's like, they're both wanting to move in the same direction, but it, it doesn't seem to have enough force to, like, pull this piece down. You know what I mean? Like, this has to come down and then go back up. And it doesn't want to do that for some reason, regardless of the extension of these. Okay, I think I need to go back to the drawing board a little bit on this, and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Alright, this time we're going to build it exactly like it's pictured in the picture. We're not going to do it with anything attached with bearings. We're going to just put a rod through a hole and let it, you know, slide in and out and move up and down, and it should just be perfect. That's the idea. So we're going to start with just a really simple sort of wheel piece, of course, like we had before. Perfect, and we'll put a hole, like, I don't know, there. And we're gonna literally just have a rod, like, roll around in that. It's gonna be, like, a small one, because it'll need some play. And, of course, the whole thing is probably not gonna move just as fluidly as it does in real life. But, you know what? It, it'll maybe work. I don't know. We'll see. We'll put our 90-degree piece like this just as we had before. And now if we lower these suspensions to zero, look at that, they compress automatically, it's perfect. So there's no friction on that whatsoever. So now all we gotta do is just extend these rods all the way through the two holes. And theoretically, this should this should work, right? I don't, can I, there we go, perfect. All the way through like that. We're gonna have to extend these drive shaft angles out a little bit more too, so we don't interfere with them so let's just go like this and then this is what i don't know not drive shaft angle i don't know what it is this thing the, the piece that holds the other piece there we go the axle i guess is what i was going for perfect something like that just so it's way out of the way and doesn't you know cause this rod to hit it and i mean theoretically right like that's the actual mechanism this just rotates left and right and these are just free floating that's the equivalent of like a ball joint i guess it's not really but you know what i mean and now if we put a motor on this, right, and attach this to a seat just for fun, I think this is like the actual solution, right? Let's just put it on a little bit of speed. That's unbelievable. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, we don't have enough suspension compression. We need more suspension. Look at that. We're maxing. Okay, hold on. Hold on. This is actually working, though. It's so cool. You see, there's, there's definitely like play on it now because you can see the play on the other gear. But it actually works. Alright, so we just gotta weld this up. Like that. Done. Delete this. Perfect. Weld this whole assembly to the ground. And, of course, make sure we set these to nothing. And here we go. This should work, right? 
<laughs> That's so cool. It works. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna put this on a switch just so we can watch this from a different angle there. That is so cool that that works. Let's speed this up a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Unbelievable. It's the same motion. That's so cool. Like, that's so cool. I can't believe that. <laughs> I don't- I don't know why this is so amusing. It's a 90 degree drive shaft. I've never, like, why- you- You'd never do this in real life for a few reasons. One, gears are just so much more efficient. You could have two gears next to each other. You could put them really, really small, like two beveled gears. 45 degree bevels, right? They'd be right next to each other. You could put a little bit of lubricant in the crankcase and boom, done. The gears are going to last a lot longer and there's no friction really. I mean, there is, but not nearly as much as this. And it would just be a much smoother system. But it's unbelievable that mechanically this works. I mean, it's unbelievable that mechanically that other demo works too. Like if we, we compare them, let's bring this one over as well. This is so cool. What a stupid idea. I mean, I, kudos to the guy who made this in real life. I've never seen this sort of a setup in real life before. Unbelievable. I feel like that was a custom-made thing, but, like, the same thing. Look, we're translating power, right? We can put this one on a switch as well, or just on... Yeah, there we go. And look at that. We're, we're converting power from only this side to that side. Same thing. One rod that just telescopes in and out. It's so stupid. And this one, this one's just as cool, except this one's got the swivel in the middle. Okay, so now the million dollar question is, can I take this mechanism? Let's, uh, let's get this first. Let's duplicate this. And I'm wondering if I can attach those to the wheels and have it as a proper, like, bearing attached point, like we were trying to do in the first place. Let's just cut this off at the top. Cut that off at the top. So to make this work... Oh god, I didn't want to take that off the lift. Right, right. But yeah, we've proven this design dimensionally is accurate. So as long as we can get, you know the physics set up. So we got that. Okay, perfect. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I, I have my doubts. I love the fact that that one works. But let's uh, loosen all this. Zero, zero. Yeah, those are dead. Perfect. All right, let's see what happens. No, it still gets jammed. So I feel like that's a, that's a, wait a minute. Am I missing something on this ball joint? It can swivel and swivel. Does it need to be able to tilt too? Maybe the ball joints are wrong. Maybe the ball joints, like, we need a third axis of movement. Let's put all three axes of movement on that. Maybe that's the issue. If we go like this, and then we go like that, and then we go like this, and then like this, and like that. Now we've got all three movement directions. Right? And we'll do the same on this side. So we go across, over, and now we can swivel it in any direction. I don't know, I feel like this is just going to break completely all right so just like that on both sides with the pistons perfect and let's put some suspension as well i don't know i i have my doubts about this working to be honest let's try it with just a single piece of suspension probably doesn't need too much movement to be honest and weld all that together all right and we'll just mount this to the ground again, and hopefully this will be the solution. Alright, let's see. Oh my god, that's all it needed. Holy cow, it was just missing one of the axes of movements. Well, now it's perfect. Now it's actually perfect. Now it's... That's so great. So this one will move exactly the number of rotations as that, and there shouldn't be any play, unlike that one which had play. This is so cool. Why this is a thing, I don't know, but it's actually kind of amazing. I could also get away with one less suspension on this vertical compression. See, it's like two, almost three completely. Man, what a cool mechanism. I can't believe that actually works in Scrap Mechanic. It's so cool. So you can see, like, there's a little bit, if we look, each movement, there is a little bit of expansion. A tiny little bit. You can see that piston just ever so slightly slides out, and there's a tiny little bit of compression. Is there any compression? Yeah, I think there is. I think there's just a little bit of both on the rod. Just a little bit of compression and a little bit of extension. But I think that you could change based on the wheel diameter and the positions of the wheels relative to each other. And then look at that lateral movement up and down. Well, the vertical movement. But that's just like, I mean, the based on the radius of the, the tire or the wheel, whatever. But look at that. What a cool mechanism. 
Either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, I just saw this one, you know, gif online. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta try making one of these in Scrap Mechanics. This is just a stupid idea, but it looks so cool. But if you have any more cool, you know, mechanical type things you'd like to see in Scrap Mechanic, let me know in the comments down below. Um, or other logic-based things as well. I'm always looking for cool projects to do in Scrap Mechanic. I like building this kind of stuff that's just, like, simple. Doesn't really have a purpose, but it's just, it's just fascinating. Like, you know, reminder, we're only powering that one side... And yet, this entire rod is what translates the motion to this other side. So just a really, really cool system. And it's so cool that you can do this kind of thing in Scrap Mechanic. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.